BCT, Valorant Champions 2023. Biggest tournament of the year where the best teams around the world internationally gather around to show who is the top dog in the scene. This year hosted in Los Angeles, California, a grand city where I was born and raised and currently reside in. These teams are going to be battling it out all day into the night to show off to the world and be able to say we are the best. And right off the bat with the opener, we have two top teams from the EMEA region. First up, we got Team Liquid. Let's see how they're feeling. Carlos are the only team in the world to be fanatic. So that also means we're the second best team in the world. <laughs> Can't argue with that logic. So let's see what their opponent has to say. I don't think there's any debates about it. Yeah. All right, Angel, well said. So we have two top teams in the world, one of them potentially the second best team in the world. And if you didn't know, I didn't know. The coaches are twin brothers, and they're both coaches of tier one teams in EMEA? That's crazy. Why the heck? So here's our matchup. Two household names, big organization that achieves top tier in every esport that they venture in. Navi and Liquid, aka the second best team in the world. So let's comb through this nail biter of a series together and see what kind of goodies we can take for ourselves in our future games. Because watching any replay is like a treasure trove of information just waiting to be picked. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So to start off, let's take a look at each team's compositions. Both teams have their own unique flavor in their team comps. I think a lot of people would play like Brim and Breach, and probably a Sentinel, usually KJ. So starting with Navi, we can see they have no Brim, no Breach. They do have a KJ, but they opted to go with double controller. They have a lot of stopping power with their comp and post plan. Now taking a look at Liquid, they have a Neon, which isn't super unorthodox, especially for this map, but to be really effective with her, let's see if he got like stun lineups, he makes good use of the ulti, her wall, and trying to beat timings in general with uh, Neon's fast nature. We do have a Breach, but again, no Brim. They've definitely taken a page out of EG's book, opting to play Sova, but they have double controller and double initiator, and they have no sentinels. Now I'm not going to say that you need to have sentinel, but on this map in particular, it makes a lot of situations easier if you had one on both attack and defense. So them opting for no sentinel at all might be causing them problems later on. Aside from that, they also have hella utility, post plant, decent stopping power for rushes, and the only same agent that they're both using is the Viper, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, moving on. Defenders have 2 on B, 3 on A to start. The B players are watching the main and arcade, so both entries are covered. Over at A site, we have two dish and one sand. KJ utility is on site and A main, so pretty much every lane is covered, looking good to start. The attackers have three B main, Viper starting A main, and Astra starting arcade by herself. So it looks like it's gonna be like a slight fake A, super slight, because it's just an Astra start, pretty much. Viper looks to be holding the fast A main flank, and Astra is tasked with holding control of the entire arcade area. So he can flank, he can watch the flank, he can lurk, split with his team, and since he's Astra, he has global presence with util so it's all good. Right away though you can see that having no sentinel kind of puts them in this kind of hard spot because if those players at dish push him he's gonna have no way of knowing and since they're so heavy on b main the defenders might opt to fight for the other lane which is arcade and he might get pinched or double swung or quadruple swung. Not only that but viper also has to watch the a main flank. If either player dies too early the round's gonna be a lot harder for anything to get done. So the round starts, Omen immediately one ways A main. Navi notices, hey, they're not insta rushing A. So Raze and Fade insta rotate. And Fade even throws an eye into A main, either for good measure or misdirection. Because it's kind of a bad eye. So I guess if someone were to creep up A main and avoid that one way, then they would have to shoot the eye or get scanned. Now I think Liquid were gonna hit B anyway, but that little Fade eye at the end might have given Liquid an extra false sense of security. Because pros make educated guesses and reads all the time. From Nats' point of view, he sees an Omen smoke A main, can't hear the KJ util. Pretty also saw the fade eye through the sand door so he's probably assuming that Raze and fade are playing together because of like c's nade combo and stuff like that so he's probably assuming something like Raze and fade a main or sand and someone's probably watching dish and he probably relayed that to his team and said all right i've seen enough here i'm turning around back to my team which was a good read but look at what happened navi insta rotated and left kj on his own to anchor and he has enough covered so he just goes into ct and just anchors it and makes sure they can't get flanked meanwhile Omen has been jump spotting B main this whole time, and he does it over and over again until he makes contact with the enemy. 
Now, because he's jump spotting, if he sees them, the enemy is more than likely going to see him too. As soon as contact is made, both teams have instant reactions. Angel quickly smokes off B main, and Team Liquid quickly proceed with their execute. Now, for the attackers, do you guys see anything wrong with this picture? Neon is about to go in, but no one on the team can scale with him. Breach is staying back, he has to stun sight and or flash. Sova has to stay back, and his body is committed to sticking the drone. And because they don't have any concrete information, we have Astra and Viper just kind of kicking back, chilling, holding the extremities for flanks, or maybe stay alive for post plant. Meanwhile, Angel TPs to the opposite side of sight, taking advantage of the fact that he was spotted. All the people rushing in B main are gonna naturally look dice, because that's where he was last seen. Luckily for him though, and he doesn't know it yet, it's only one person that made it through B main. And funny enough, luckily for Team Liquid, they were lucky that they were not scaling up with Neon, because the defending raise and fade, they throw a nice timed seize and a nice follow up grenade. If anyone else was caught in that, they'd likely be dead. Because the seize nade was aimed and timed perfectly, it stopped the push dead in its tracks and forced the Neon to go up a little more, right into the loving arms of Angel. And remember, at the start of the round, they assumed that Fade was playing A because they saw the eye. So when they got hit by that thing, they were probably like, Hey yo, what the f and just in case, Viper is ready in tower to help, puts up his orb to block the tower rope to dissuade any flankers or pushers, make them think twice, or force them to force the issue and get decayed, just make it hard for them. Hey, yo, what the also another quick note, if you're attacking and you want to do something fast tempo, I would recommend against the drone, because it could be really clunky for your entry, and if you just fling a dart, you can get info and just go on the run like right away. Just something to consider. So Navi now are playing defense, have a man advantage, and a lot of utility was expended on both sides. Now from Navi's POV, all they saw was a low neon running it down, get seized and naded and shot to death. They also saw Breach Util, Sova Util, which places them at the scene, along with a Viper Wall and Astra Stars. So now they're thinking, oh shoot, was this a fake? And why would they think that? Well, simply put, it's because they have no map control. Like, yeah, they have a strong defense on B site because all the bodies are there, but that comes at the cost of having no presence in the map and you're kind of playing in the dark. So there's pros and cons to like how you set up every situation. Well, obviously they're not coming B like right the second. So with those thoughts in mind, Angel makes the decision that rotating is simply just not good enough. They're probably going A, let's triple up, gain some info, trade or fight or fast retake. Now, before we continue, let me just preface by saying that I got nothing but love for Angel. So I'm not doing this to just shit on him or his abilities as a player and a leader. I've known him since the CSGO days, not personally of course, but I'm happy that he's still in the scene, still fragging, still playing, and that he's doing good for himself. I'm happy for that. Now, with that out the way, everybody makes mistakes, but I just wanted to kind of dissect why this was a bad decision and why he should have probably recognized that it was too big a gamble and a bad call to make. Now, before they walk down, they have numbers advantage, they just stopped the push, which they are now probably assuming was a fake because it was so easy and weak. <laughs> and if they left one man behind and then the rest of them were headed A or Dish or whatever, then it would be a 3v1 against the guy, the enemy holding the flank. And you'd be right on their heels if they were going A main to catch them off guard with a fast retake. However, they have no info, they have no pressure being applied to them. Everything's chill. There's no need to make a play like this. It's just risky for nothing. If it was even numbers, maybe a 4v4 even, or if they were down 3v4, then sure, go for it. You gotta make a play happen so you can try to even things up or swing things into your favor. That's totally understandable and worth the risk. In this particular instance, he already had the advantage and unfortunately more than threw it away because all three of them die instantly while only trading one man out. So not only are you down numbers now, but you end up losing like three fourths of the entire map in the blink of an eye. Every person that's alive, even if they're AFK, is basically like a turret or a trip like you're controlling that area. Once you die, you obviously lose that control and that part of the map goes dark for the rest of your team. Now, if you look at Liquid after Neon died, what do they do? Literally, absolutely nothing. They just sat there. They just sat around waiting for a flank or a push. They had no map control, no info, and they were pretty much stuck practically in their minds because they don't know if someone's flanking, yada yada. So they just opted to sit still and just wait a sec to see if the enemy's gonna do anything weird. And lucky for them, they were gifted the round thanks to Nat's crazy shots. Right before Navi did push out of B, Xiao, the Fade, did throw an eye RK, but it's like, bro, it's an eye that's like, easily dodgeable, and to make such a heavy decision just off of that eye alone, it's kinda sus. So it's, like, understandable why things played out the way they did. You know, maybe it's hindsight, but I think in that moment, given all the circumstances, it was indeed a mistake.
So now it's the first gun round. We have three Navi members starting at B main looking for a fight. Angel starts off jump swatting again, finds contact early on and smokes up the B main choke. He's getting ready to swing off of the fade eye and Liquid is getting ready to fire back with Neon already beating the timing and getting very close, closer than any of Navi expects. Some get flashed, some don't, but the Neon unfortunately gets team flashed or he didn't look away. So he shoots a bit, throws out a stun, backs off. Nobody dies or take any damage, so pretty even exchange on both sides. They trade out a little bit of util and then it's back to like a neutral state. But look at what Navi's doing here. They're doing a little bit of show and go. So they show presence B main, met with heavy resistance. Instead of pressing the issue further, they immediately start walking off to go to the other lane, Arcade. Now this is because typically teams will usually not want to go all in on one lane. They'd rather try to do like a pincer move, which is a split. And this applies out like all maps pretty much. And it's not always the case, but a lot of the times will be true. Now the Astra gets caught here and they probably should have been playing more patient or passive for these reasons. Astra here is on an island all by himself. He has nothing to watch his back. He has a poop gun. You know, what was he trying to accomplish right there? He's supposed to be the late lurk into the round and he ends up being the first kill. That's a pretty big no-no. And he provides his team with smokes, which they do not have access to, but they have a Viper as backup, but it's not as good because they're harder to place. So now finally Liquid decides, hey, there were three people at B, just kill their Astra. Let's try to keep those three guys there and then hit a the weaker site. So they do a little bit of a fake with a Sova drone, trying to keep those bodies on B, even darts on top, probably put the Viper wall up. Kind of weak fake, but it's enough to not allow Navi to fast rotate. And as soon as that fake is done, Liquid is already busting out of sands in A main. Neon throws up her fast lane to take space and run through the wall. He spots a turret on drop, and the defending Viper hears all of this. Great cover and awareness by Nats. Saves his life right there. And Neon's probably calling out, watch out for KJ, she's probably sight or CT. Breach throws out a flash, she thinks it's safe to peek, gets laid out, but now his team knows one more sight. So at this point, they honestly should have been scaling together, in my opinion, because they knew or assumed that B site still had three players. So after the entry on Viper, it was one person at most, with a decent chance of not being dropped because there's a turret there and who would play in front of a turret. So I would have liked to see them take sight together and scale up instead of kind of just holding it drop and sand. Again, the scaling is kind of messed up. Luckily, they deal with KJ cleanly and even catch another rotator and raise and spawn and I don't know what happened here if KJ was screaming they're all sight they're all sight or if Angel assumed that they would be all playing in the viper ult I don't know but he just yolos out of sand gives away free gun and his life good recovery by liquid and they salvage around win their bonus and keep the momentum strong So now it's the second gun round, Navi still doesn't have a round on the board, they need to win this cleanly so that they can get on the board and build up an economy for later rounds. The round is pretty much shaping out the same way as the pistol round did, at least on liquid side of things, they're just sending it with Neon, he gets folded, again, pretty easy. Now in Navi's POV, they saw the same thing happening, Reach Util, Sova Util, Neon running it down, Neon got stopped so easy, but it looked like they were actually trying to commit, and yeah, almost all of Navi did rotate over, this time Xiao is anchoring on A, and just naturally, he's playing the same spot that KJ did, no need to be like out on an island over there on A side by yourself. He's playing for info and he can call out to his team as the anchor if it seems like they're about to execute A. So again, look at Team Liquid, just like Pistol Round. As soon as Neon dies, the round kind of fizzles down and again, they have no map control, no information. They're scared about flanks, etc. So what are they called to do? Absolutely nothing. They're just sitting around again, hoping that they make the same push or play or mistake. And likewise for Navi, same situation. They have a strong B hold right now, but they have no information, but nothing else is pressured. So they're all just chilling, waiting for them to make a move and they can just retake as a team together if they go A. And also note that a couple of defenders are playing closer to spawn. Just in case they do have to rotate, they'll be faster than the ones playing on site. So Navi adjusted by doing nothing when they have the advantage on defense. As soon as attacker util starts flooding in, defenders respond in kind, slow the push down, stagger it, and picks them apart cleanly one by one. Navi get on the board and take a lot of guns into the next round. They bolster their economy and set themselves up to mount a comeback. Alright, so I know that was only like three rounds covered, but I didn't want this video to be like five hours long. So I just wanted to show a little bit of back and forth between both teams, good and bad. And I just hope some of you out there are able to take anything away from it. Once again, I just wanted to take a second and thank you guys for your time if you made it this far. If you appreciate this like I appreciate you, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And hopefully see you in the next one.